What's up, Blue Nation? And welcome to another lonely edition of the Hidden Pages, where I'm Jonathan here to talk about comics that came out this week. Mostly just Marvel, because I don't read DC. Probably should start. I don't know. Hopefully, Devon's back next week, but we'll we'll see what happens. Um, we'll we'll go alphabetically down this list. So we'll start with uh, A Force. I don't know if you guys are reading A Force. It was a title that started. Um, during the whole Secret Wars thing about like an all-girl Avenger team, kind of like what the X-Men did with the last version of X-Men, um, where they kind of they kind of done that and the team, whenever they made um, the space station that everyone is like three different teams are basing out of Alpha Flight and all that, Ultimates and yada yada yada. Well, the um, there's an A Force on there. I don't think they're calling themselves A Force though, but it's She-Hulk, she Captain Marvel, um, what's her name, Singular, Sing, uh, Singularity or whatever, and Dazzler, there's people like that, but um, the reason I want to talk about this title is they killed Dazzler, why the hell they killed Dazzler, like, I don't know, kill Ms. Marvel or She-Hulk, don't kill Dazzler, it's just, it's, it feels like this is one more uh, anti-mutant propaganda that Marvel's been doing. I just, I don't understand it. I've always loved Dazzler. I thought she's a cool character. I don't, I don't see the point in killing her off, but they killed her off. And it wasn't even a cool or particularly creative death. It was just, boom, you're dead, you're gone. Adios, see you later. Um, next up we have Avengers Assault on Pleasant Hill Alpha. Uh, I guess that's the new, um, I haven't really heard anything about it until I saw the store and I picked it up. But I guess that's the new kind of like crossover event going on for, I guess for at least Avengers. And, um, well, a while back in, um, Captain America's book, Falcon, Cap Falcon and Steve Rogers had a, a dispute over S.H.I.E.L.D. and this guy called the Whisperer, who we find out is Rick Jones, you know, the, the guy responsible for Bruce Banner becoming the Hulk, dude who's been an on and off again hero forever, um, mostly sidekick. It was even the uh, A-bomb for a while, which was like a Hulk abomination hybrid mix thing. Well, he's been uh, sending people... Well, he's been helping uh, Cap Falcon with intel. It's kind of like um, a Snowden type character. So he tells Cap Falcon while Bucky tells Steve Rogers. Because Bucky has been going around destroying shield bases and Steve Rogers has been hunting him down trying to figure out why his best friend is, is doing all these criminal activities. So both Steve Rogers and Falcon find out, Cap Falcon find out at the exact same time that Shield didn't destroy the Cosmic Cube pieces they were using to alter reality to benefit mankind. They in fact have uh, been keeping them, and we find out that they created this little city called Pleasant Hill, where they take criminals and repurpose them as ordinary citizens. Kind of very 50 s but Mary Hill asserted Steve Rogers that nothing could go possibly wrong. Nothing could possibly go wrong. So of course something went wrong. The villains started to reassert their personalities and attack. And that's where the first issue ends. It seems to be a very exciting series. I can't wait for it to continue. Uh, and we got Iron Man, where Tony Stark, uh, Mary Jane Watson, is now working for uh, Tony Stark. War Machine is missing, and so Tony asks Spider-Man, who's in Tokyo, where War Machine went missing, to go find them. This lady turns War Machine's armor against him and turns into this crazy monster. Meanwhile, some girl is building her own Iron Man suit. Iron Man's getting pretty interesting. Iron Man's always been one of those titles that, like, I, I like it, but it's like, eh, if I'm short some money this week, Iron Man's a title I'm gonna skip. But it's, it's actually becoming very interesting. Meanwhile, over in Nova, we see that uh, the guy who was impersonating Nova's dad, it's a clone of Nova's dad, and he was hired by the Centauri, the creatures in the Avenger movie, to the alien race in the Avengers movie to uh, figure out why Nova's helmet, the kid Nova's helmet, is different than everyone else's and why only him and his father can use it. But at the end of the issue, uh, his dad's clone was killed and someone else gets his Nova helmet, so it's gonna be Nova versus Nova in the next issue. It's gonna be exciting. Um, Old Man Logan. So where we last left Old Man Logan, he was in Hawkeye's apartment with uh, Kate Bishop, the girl of Hawkeye, or the, as she doesn't like to be called, the other Hawkeye, has um, a bow and arrow at his face and is questioning him. He tells her that he's from the future and that he's trying to protect the world from what happens in his timeline. She believes him and they go together to hunt down Mysterio. Well, they don't find Mysterio. They find some other people and Wolverine goes crazy. And he like cuts off a guy's hand. He's about to kill him. 
but then Hawkeye stops him and they, they had this big like yelling match and he chops her bow in half and then takes off and then as soon as he takes off he gets attacked by uh, Steve Rogers and then the, the next issue is called Old Man Logan versus Old Man uh, was it Old Man Rogers or something like that. Old Man Steve Rogers, whatever. It, it, I don't know. I love the title. And I'm in. Old Captain America versus Old Wolverine. Uh, I'm in. That, that was going to be a tight issue. This issue was all right, but next issue is going to be awesome. Um, all right, so then we have uh, the Spider-Man, which is not Peter Parker, but Miles Morales' comic book. And uh, at the end of it, he got Captain America's shield and fought off Black, o Black Heart. And Peter Parker's like, what are you doing? So in this issue, Peter Parker's kind of like, well, I regret letting you be use the Spider-Man name. It's my name. You can't have it. Now I'm getting blamed for all the shit you're doing. And then he gets knocked out by Black Hole, and Miles Morales saves him. So then Peter Parker's like, all right, you know what? You can, you can use the name. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I don't mind. You saved all of us. And Miles Morales is freaking out like, oh, my God, I touched the demon, and the Avengers like me, and all this stuff. And it's real cool. And then... um. Well, this girl YouTuber, she uh, she takes a video of him, and they see that part of his mask is torn, and they find out that, oh, she's like, I can't tell if he's black or brown, but the important thing is he isn't white. This is amazing! And Miles Morales is really bothered by that. Like, why do I have to be a black Spider-Man? Why do I have to be a brown Spider-Man? Why can't I just be Spider-Man? Like, why do you have to put this this qualifier on me? And I agree. Like, I mean, I was easy for me to sound white, but I still think, like, why can't he just be Spider-Man? I mean, he's people. <laughs> Everyone's just people. Why do we have to specify, oh, you're white, or you're black, or you're this, or you're that? Why can't he just be a person? Why can't they just be Spider Man? Him, um, 2099, um, Miguel O'Hare. Why can't he just be Spider Man? Why can't Peter Parker just be Spider Man? Why can't Miles Morales be Spider Man? Why do they have to have qualifiers on him? I mean, I don't know, there's a Spider-Man or Spider-People because there's also the Spider-Women and stuff like that, but it just, I don't know, it just, it seems like, I don't know, I, I agree with him, I think it's ridiculous, he should just be called Spider-Man, he shouldn't have all this stuff, but I don't think his costume is cool, Peter Park. Um, last up we have the Un uh, Uncanny Avengers, so uh, a couple things are happening in this title, first of all, further uh, inhuman relation problems, we have, um, I forget the name of the girl who's in the the inhuman member of the Uncanny Avengers. Well, Medusa comes to her and is trying to like talk to her and get her to join up with them. And she's like, I don't want to, I don't want to. I said, Synapse. And she doesn't want to. And um, Hellion from the, the um, he's a mutant. Whenever they had the new, new X-Men Academy X series, he was part of the Hellions. He was part of Emma Frost's class. Well, he got affected by the um, the T cloud, and his powers are going havoc, and he attacks New Atlantia because he's like, "Well, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna take out the people who did this to me." And Synapse kind of stops him, and we see that like mutants all over the place are, are being killed by this cloud. Once again, Marvel saying, "Screw you to mutants and Fox," and it's like, "Come on, stop! I love the X Men. Stop making their lives so damn hard." But um, while that's happening, we also find out that uh, the Wrecker, you know. He gets out of prison and he attacks the Avenger Mansion, mainly just because he wants to go back to jail. And we find out that the old school Avenger Mansion has been turned into a themed hotel where people go dressed as Avengers. And uh, Deadpool and Quicksilver stop him. Deadpool pays him to look out for information on the Red Skull because they're still looking for the Red Skull who has Xavier's brain giving him psychic powers. And we find out that Red Skull and his daughter Sin are actually hiding the old uh, Avenger base underneath the Manson mansion, and that he implanted Quicksilver with uh, subliminal messages. So Uncanny Avengers is getting really cool. I can't wait to see what happens with uh, Red Skull and all that stuff. It's a pretty good week on uh, Marvel Comics. Um, I didn't really read any DC comics this week, but um, if you guys have a DC comic that you would like me to read, write it in the comments, and I'll see you next week.